I am there and I asked for many reasons. The first one is my English is not good because I speak American and not English. That's very good. <laughs> if you spoke English, I would not be able to understand. <laughs> because you are from the United States? Yes. Ah, yes. You are my friend. And you are mine. <laughs> Thank you so much. But I was very much acquainted with Vierne because he studied at the National Institute for the Blind as uh, also Marshall and myself and Augustin Barrier, Littes and many others. But at, at Notre Dame, Vienne was very happy, artistically speaking, and very unhappy because of the priests. <laughs> he had a difficult character but he was a very intelligent person, but very difficult. For example, one day, on a Sunday, he was very close to the organ, and he was able to see a little bit. And he saw something written like that. It is forbidden to smoke at the organ loft. And the, the following Sunday, he came with an ashtray and he put the ashtray exactly under the interdiction to smoke. <laughs> and of course, the priests were informed about that. And they were not very happy with him. But this man has a very great influence uh, for many, many organists and many composers. I, I did not study with him. I was not a student of him. But he was very careful about my compositions and he gave me very good uh, opinions. And many uh, composers, like Durifle, for example, uh, studied with him and he was very close for the young people very close but he was very he, he has a fantastic sense of humor and some sometimes the humor was not very <clears throat> very clear for example he told us one sunday if I die sometimes, and I'm sure that will happen, <laughs> I don't wish the, the funerals are in Notre Dame. <laughs> because I was so suffering with the, the priest. I don't wish them, uh, uh, Thomas Schley will, will tras translate that. Je ne veux pas qu'ils salissent mon cercueil avec leurs goupillons. Like that. Sie, er möchte nicht, dass sein Sarg äh, von ihrem Weihwasser beschmutzt wird. But <coughs> the Holy Ghost was very close to him because his funerals were, were in Notre Dame. But the Cardinal came and the priest did not uh, give the benediction of his body, only the Cardinal. I was there when he died. And that is very strange. When he was informed by the priest that he, 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 he was ready to play the last concert in Notre Dame. Then he was very sensitive, I, sh I should say. And his, his heart was very poor. And when he was going up to the organ loft, he said to a lady who was very close to him, tonight I shall die. You take care of my music, please. And he started with the triptych. 
And when he finished the last walk, suddenly we heard a pedal E and something like that. That was the, the doctor who said that to him because he fell he fall down he fell down on the bench and he was dead. Then he saw before I should say forty five minutes before <clears throat> that his death was very close to him. And we were very sad, extremely sad, because we loved this man. And he had a terrible life. First of all, his wife was a singer, and she disappeared. His brother was also an organist, a very good one. He was the winner of the first prize at the conservatoire. He died during the war. He was killed. His son, too, was killed. And his daughter disappeared also. After that, he, suffered. he was suffering a lot with his eyes. And he broke a leg, and he has no money. I, I suppose that is enough for one man. But his consolation was the music. And when he was informed that his son was killed, he said, I don't wish to cry. I wish to compose a quintet. And he composed a magnificent quintet for string and piano. And that is very exceptional. But he had a lot of difficulties also with, <laughs> I should say, with ladies. And uh, finally, when he was 16 years old, 60 years old, he became more happy than before. And he had a lot of students with him. He was not rich, of course, but he was rich because he had a lot of consolation with his artistic life. But he had a terrible expression sometimes because he, he had the difficulties with Dupre. Dupre studied with him. And we do not know exactly what happened. But after that, he became very sad because he, des he, he wishes to meet Dupre, but that was impossible. And when Dupre composed the way of the, the Chemin de la Croix, he said to me, that is to me, he said Dupre composed the Chemin de la Croix with 14 stations, but one is missing. I said, no, that is only 14. He said, no, it, it, it would be very good to have the, another one by the title of ah, Thomas with translate, Plavante devant le clergé de Saint-Sulpice. Nach Jahren hätte die 15. Station des Kreuzwegs von Dupré heißen sollen, auf allen Vieren vor dem Klerus von Saint-Sulpice. <laughs> that, is, that is bien. But he, he was a very great man and no one who was so happy to meet him, no one was uh, I should say, everyone was very impressioned, and we all loved him very. I, I think it is enough. The first time I met Vidor, it was 3 a.m. 
and Vidor was 86. I met him after a concert, and this concert was devoted to his work. And he told me, this organist is a very good one. Unfortunately, I don't think he read my works before. <laughs> and I can tell you another story. One Vidor was approximately uh, 50 years old. He taught to a young lady who was 15 years old. And after the lesson, she said, Matt, let me tell you something. He said, what? She said, I am in love with you. He said, oh, my little girl, don't, don't say that. Otherwise, I come with you and I say that to your mother. You will say that in about 15 more years. And 15 years after that, after another lesson, she said, do you remember what you told me 15 years ago? He said, oh, no, not at all. And she said, you told me that I have to say again if I am still in love with you. And I say, I, love, I am in love with you. And it was very nice. He married her. <laughs> Met her. But he was almost 80 years old. Vidor was a, a man very intelligent, extremely intelligent. He wrote a lot of things. He wrote also many operas. And I was there when they did the premiere. But I must confess, he was not very gifted for the, for the opera. But he was a very good orchestrator. And he wrote a book about the orchestration, which is a very nice, very good, and very interesting book. Very interesting book. But I was not acquainted with him. It was very difficult to be acquainted with this man. I was there when he played for the festivity for Beethoven in Notre Dame when they did the Beethoven Mass in uh, 1927. And he played the back uh, prelude in E minor. That was fantastic about the style. Really, I never heard such a fantastic interpretation of this work. And he was very old, very. He, do, he did not play the fugue. Instead of the fugue, he improvised. And that was a pity. Monsieur Dupré, ah. comment est-ce que vous l'avez connu, euh, sa ah. classe ah. et tout ça si... ah, Pour Dupré, that is quite different. Because I studied uh, at the Marcel Dupré's class at the same time that Messian. And we were uh, accepted by, as a students in 1927. And Dupré was at this time a fantastic teacher. But one day, suddenly, he said, I would like to know how many hours you practice a day. And he said, Messian, how many hours? <laughs> and Messian said, five hours. And he said to all of us. And he said to me, how many hours? Uh, I said, uh, eight hours. And he was very silent. He said, when I was young, I studied, I practiced 12 hours a day. But he did not have a very good sense of humor. For example, 
One day, he submitted a theme for our improvisation. The, the theme was in, in B major. And we were obliged to transpose at the dominant. And the dominant was F sharp major. And the theme was very complicated. I said to the, the student who was close to me, oh la, I shall be terribly embarrassed to transport that in F sharp major. And he said to me, don't worry. You have to, to use the, the Nazar alone. <laughs> and you will play you will play in the same key and you will play that automatically in F sharp major. I said oh, that is a good idea. <laughs> then I started my improvisation. I played on the first manual and the second manual with flute eight and four and Nazar. And I did off the flute eight and four. And Dupre said to me, careful, you have the Nazar alone. I said, I know. He said, ah. Uh -huh. And I played my theme in the low section like that. But I played the pedal in F sharp and the manual in, in B. And my, my uh, friends were laughing a lot, but not Dupre. <laughs> and when I finished, he said, I'm sorry, my dear friend, there is no tears here. Because for a minor theme, it would be very useful for, for you. <laughs> and uh, of course, I did not uh, try to do that another one another time, because he was not very happy with me. But he, he was a, a terrible tight teacher also, because every Friday <coughs> we were obliged to play one work definitely, every Friday. And I, I was not informed about that. I played twice the Bach Prelude in, in Fugue in B minor. And when I finish the second week, he told me that. When I studied the piano with Diemer, a friend of mine played three Chopin etudes in the year. He played the, the etude for the tierce, for the sixth, and for the octave. But if you wish to play this work for three months, that would be difficult for you. Because I used to write everything. And I know that you played twice. It is enough. And one day, he asked to a friend of mine, Lites, to learn in one week the variation of Wein and Klagen by Liszt. And Littes was not informed about this work. He said to me, is it a long work? I said, oh, yes, very long. <laughs> he said, well, if that, I don't learn that. I said, don't do that, because if you, if you are not able to play on Friday, you will leave the class, definitely. And finally, he practiced a lot, a lot. <laughs> and he played this work. And Dupre said, now, you will play the back six sonata, number six. And when Dupre left, Dupre uh, little said to us, ah, it was very difficult to learn that in one week. But now I wish to forget that immediately. But Dupre was terrible for us because we had, we had no vacations. For the vacation, he, he said, you have to write your improvisation as you wish to improvise for the next competition. And we were obliged to write the fugue, the composition, the improvisation based on Gregorian chant, and the free, composition, uh, free improvisation. And 
so on, you know, and we were really exhausted. But we were very happy to have with Messian with us. And uh, Messian was a fantastic improviser. But he improvised the free improvisation always in the same way. And he finished on the Vox Celestis like uh, Ravel, uh, le point du jour. All these improvisations were finished by like this uh, combination. When I got my first prize, I asked to Dupré to have lessons with him in Meudon, is privately. And one day, I was organist at this time at the church of Saint-Pierre de Montrouge. And the, the man who was organist before was my piano teacher. And he was a very good friend of Vierne. And when I was organist, I said to the priest that the organ is not very good. It would be necessary to rebuild this organ. And the priest was very intelligent. He did that. And for the dedicatory recital, I asked to Vierne to do that. And I was informed that Dupré would be very disappointed. And I, I said to Dupré, on Sunday, Vierne will play the de dedicatory recital in Saint-Pierre-de-Montrouge. He said, why? I answered, because he was a close friend of the man who was organist before. And I think that because of his memory, it is good that Vierne uh, play this recital. And Dupré did not agree at all. And he said that, do you really think that people who are, which uh, it is possible for them to go and listen to Vierne in Notre Dame will pay some pennies for going to Notre Dame, to Saint Pierre de Montrouge for listening to Vienne. I said, I do, I, I, I do hope. He said, I am sure not. And finally, I was very courageous in spite of, in spite of many bad things he told me. And finally, Vierne played the recital. And when I left du, du, Dupré, I said, there is my money. He said, no. Now you will be my friend, and you will come without money. And I did not come. That was finished. I had the privilege to know Messian when he was very young. He was nine, 19 years old. And we still are very close friends. Messian was a strange man, but very <coughs> friendly. But we have a lot of very funny stories with him. I tell you one. One, he was a competitor for the fugue at the Conservatoire in Paris. That is very long, 18 hours. Of course, we are invited to come with a suitcase and sandwiches and a lot of things. And we start at 6 a.m. and we finish at midnight. But every hour, a man used to come and said, everything is all right, etc., etc. And for Messian, he was on time. That was probably the only time in his life 
he was on time at six o'clock. And they gave him the studio and the theme. And the man came at eight o'clock. He said, everything is all right? He said, yes. At 10 o'clock, he said, everything is all right? He said, no. At noon time, he said, and now is, you are better? No. And every two hours like that, like that. And at four hours, the man said, but what happens to you? He said, I need to eat. And he said, but you have to eat? He said, yes, I would like very much. Why don't you eat, he said. Because I cannot open my suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> that is mission. <laughs> and another day, when he was the winner of at the class, at the Harmony's class, he was invited by the Harmony teacher to go for a supper, something like that. And that was very close to the conservatoire. And Messian uh, was living with his parents, parents very far. And the Harmony teacher said, now, Messiaen, you come with us. He said, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot come right now. Why, he said. Because he said, my mother told me to come before. He said, but you are living very far. He said, yes, I know. And I come after that. And the teacher insisted, tell me why you are obliged to go so far. He said, because I wish to wash my hands. <laughs> and the man said, but it is possible to do that in my house, if you wish. But in spite of that, this man <coughs> was very kind, he still is very kind, and devoted to his friends. But I have 60 letters from Messiaen, and the last one is very precious to me because three years ago my wife died and he was very acquainted with her like with me and I, I composed for my wife a very long works for organ by the title of Homage to a Soul Homage à une âme and I sent the copy to Messian. And he, he, does, he does not answer. And if you call him by telephone, he does not answer too. But he immediately answered to me. And he said, when I finish my opera, I immediately played the, shall play this work. That is really very precious to me. But I have a special possibility to talk with him on the telephone. Because if you call him and if you say hello, you have no answer. Then I don't say hello. I said, ta 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 ti ti ta ta I said, ah, this you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And like that, we can talk. Otherwise, it is impossible. But you know, Messian was a great composer even when he wrote the first work, The Banquet Celeste. And he knows, he knew at this time, that he was a very gifted composer. But he did not know his system. And he told me that later on. He, discover, he discovered his system by analysis, analyzing his works. He discovered the, the scales and everything. Then he did not decide before. He discovered afterwards. That is very strange. 
And that is his artistic personality. When he invited me very often for a premiere of his works, he wrote to me, in about one week, they will do the premiere of my uh, work for piano, something like that. And come and be noisy. That is written. Of course, I was noisy. noisy. <laughs> and when they uh, did my quintet for organ and string quartet, he came. And after the performance, he came to me, the last one, and he said, I don't wish to tell you this work is a good one. That would be too stupid. And one that they did is Vingt Regards sur l'Enfant Jésus. I was there, and I came to him, the last one also. And I said to him, Olivier, I think that since least no one wrote like you for the piano and no one musically speaking. And he said, I think that 300 people, people came to me. No one said that to me. And I was waiting for someone. And you are the last, and you told me exactly what I wish. And uh, he, had, he is a very successful composer. And it is why we are a lot of people very close to him. But it is very difficult to meet him because, for example, right now he's composing his opera about St. Francis of Assisi. And he has a fantastic orchestration to write. He, he is working at least 12 hours a day. And sometime at 11.30, he has no eat, he has no supper. And he is terribly tired now, very tired. And I met him some months ago. I said, is your opera finished? He said, yes, but I need two more years for finishing my orchestration. And we are expecting to, have, to go to the premiere. He said to me, if my, works, if my work is a bad one, I shall be very depressed because I, I am working for many, many years about this work. But I am not sure it, it, it is a good one. That is terrible to hear that. But I am sure he's, he's wrong. It is. But it's, I said, what do you wish? for the performance of this work. And he said, I wish seven men and one angel. I said, that would be very difficult to have an angel. He said, no, no, I have one. And I know the angel. That is a very fine lady. <laughs> but it would be very easy to talk about Messiaen all over the night. But let me tell you that he is, for me, like a brother, a very dear brother. Because he did something for me that I wish to know. When I studied orchestration with Paul Ducas, he was also a Paul Ducas student, as Durifle, uh, Alain also. I did not have the scores in Braille, and Messian told me, you come with me every Wednesday 
from uh, five to nine, and I shall read for you every score you wish. And he did that for many years. That is very exceptional for such a great man. And that was a fantastic help for me. I wish to finish with that. Tournemire, first of all, was a great artist, but especially Christian artist. He told me one day, if the music is not to the glory of God, it is completely useless. I said, but what about Peleas and Melisande and Stravinsky, Roussel? And he answered, useless. Then he devoted his life, most of his life, to the glory of God by composing L'Orgue Mystique plus a lot of other things like the seven words of the Christ. And when he did the premiere of the seven words of the Christ, I was there, of course, and only 39 people came. And when I met him after the concert, he said, I am, I am happy because the audience was very good. 39 people. That was enough for him. This music is very difficult for many people because Tournemire wrote like anyone wrote before him and anyone after him. And that is very dangerous for an artist to speak his own language. And that is Tournemire. He was a very special teacher. He did not teach very much privately. I don't think he had no more than 10 or 11 students. And I was very happy to be one of them. But for studying with him, it was necessary to have the first prize at the conservatory. Because technically, he was not interested. For example, one day he said to me, you will improvise a Gregorian paraphrase. I have to explain to you. And he said that, first of all, you have to create an atmosphere. After that, you obliged the listeners to follow you. Then, you do a crescendo after the first exposition. And a very efficient crescendo. And when you are sure that people are following you, suddenly you break with a very dissonant chord. The audience is almost killed. Then a long rest, and you repeat your dissonant chord with full organ. Now your audience is killed. Then you use the Vox Celestis and eight bourdon and open the, the heaven to your audience. Believe me, your audience deserves that. That is an explanation. It's all. Of course, 
I did try to improvise. And after four bars, he said, he came, no, you did not understand anything. And he started again, you have to create an atmosphere. I said, I try. Yes, but that is not enough. And that was like that for one hour. And on my right, on the organ bench, the nine volumes of Peter's edition for the Bach works were there. And when he, he used to come, he pushed me like that. And the nine volumes on the floor. And when he said, now you start again, I put the, the volume on the bench. And two minutes later, I said, no, that is not that. And again, the volume on the floor. Always like that, for one hour. And he did not realize once that his volume was changing all, all of the time. <laughs> but nevertheless, he was a fantastic teacher, but it was very difficult to understand him. But if we were fortunate enough for following his explanation, that was extraordinary because he was a great poet. And one day, he was invited by Marshall to improvise a mass at Saint-Germain-des-Prés. And the choir master from Saint-Sulpice was there. And he was accustomed to Vidor. And Vidor, after, for, for the postulate, played a march or something like that with full organ. But Tournemire was not interested with the postulate or the prelude. He was interested with his own music. And he was finishing the mass with Vox Alessis and Aid Borden. And this man came to him and he said, I wish you to know that there is the sortie. And he said, Ah, thank you very much. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, he said to Marshall, Who is this stupid man who came to me and disturbed me so much? And Marshall said, That is the choir master from Saint Sulpice. He said, Oh, I am not astonished. <laughs> But he was very furious and disappointed. And he said to Marshall, you are very indulgent to have such a man with you in your organ loft. And it was very difficult to be accepted at St. Clotilde in the organ loft with Tournemire. But this man was a fantastic improviser the most fantastic I've ever heard. Because he was free. He was only busy with uh, his own dream, I should say. And he was interested with the commentary of the Gregorian chant. It is why, probably, he is not a popular composer. Because right now, his music is based on the Gregorian chant. And unfortunately, the Gregorian chant is almost out of the church. And the priests are not patient. For example, at St. Clotilde, the, the priest told me about Tournemire. I think 
his music is a very boring Bible. And I said to him, I am very sorry for you, Monsieur Le Curé. But he is also very sorry about me. <laughs> <laughs> but Tournemir invited me to come the 14th of July, 1939. And he said to me, I have been operated some months ago. I was very close to die. Then I realized that only one thing is important to me. I wish to know who will succeed me at St. Clotilde. And I would like you to succeed me. I was so astonished that I said, but don't you think I am able to succeed Tournemir? He said, yes, I think so. I said, I don't think so. He said, then I am a stupid man. He became very furious immediately. And he explained to me, I wish you to succeed me because you have a Christian man. But Tournemir was a difficult person. He has a very difficult character. But he was a very great artist. And at the jury at the conservatoire, when he submitted the theme for the improvisation, we were always very happy because his themes were very beautiful. And very often, the other theme was very stupid. It is why we always think that Tournemir is not very famous now but he will certainly be later on. And he wrote so many works because he wrote also a lot of symphonies for orchestra and a splendid prelude for piano. Of course, the pianist does not know these works, but they are very beautiful. And I think even when he wrote for piano or for orchestra, that is also to the, to the glory of God. But personally, after improvising one hour with him, I was exhausted for one week. But when I was interested to try to be the winner of the first prize of the Les Amis de l'Orgue. He did a very good job with me. And I was the winner because of my Gregorian paraphrase. And he came to me after that. He said, I am very glad that you are the winner. And I said, my dear master, I know that if I have the winner and I know that is because you, you, are, you were a very great help to me. And all over his life, he said, I taught to some people who were not very grateful, except one. And this one, that was me. But every Sunday, a lot of people were at St. Clotilde for listening the postlude of the High Mass. And when he improvised the Vespros, the Magnificat is one and a half minute long. But with Tournemir improvisation, it was 20 minutes long. And people are obliged to stand up 
during this Magnificat. And they, they were furious at St. Clotilde to stand up so long for listening to music that they did not understand anything. I am talking about the people from St. Clotilde, and they are also right now talking about me, and they do not understand anything. That is a, <laughs> that is a big tradition. <laughs> but in spite of that, we have a fantastic organ, and that is our best consolation. I finished that with that. <laughs>